Notice a gift, not something you earn. Like those gifts each house received last week. Those cups. And inside the cup, the gift, were two things. A rock with a word and the scroll that had a word in it. Those three represented one. Sanctification. That gift to remind us of how precious we are. Those of you that are willing to share your word, come up here and share. Uh oh, so the barber said, I'm me first. All right, there you go. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. My scripture is, is Yahshua said, I have come into the world as light. Whosoever believe in me will not be in darkness. That's John 12, 46. Yahshua already is the light. And if we trust in him, we won't be walking in darkness. So remember, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, Yah, but thine be done. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Thank you, Sister Barbara. Not my will, but thine. Perfect. And did anybody else have your word to share? Oh, here come Rachel. The scripture I was given, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. John 8 and 12, it just fits right into what she was saying. That's why I was like, let me get up, let me get up. Um, but before I expound on it, I will say this week, he called this the gift, like he gave us gifts, okay? So on this week, I, I'm just going to be honest, I felt overwhelmed, exhausted, and a word came to me. And um, he said, well, why are you exhausted and overwhelmed? I'm going to tell you why. I, I'm more concerned about fulfilling my word in your life than fulfilling your worldly wants, Rachel. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. Because I'm focusing on what I want in the relationship with my kids, what I want physically, you know, material things. But he says, but what does my word say? And when you focus on that and when you really lean on that, then it would be less no. I want to say no, because when we're saying he's a light, because darkness, there's confusion, there's anxiety, there's depression. But if you're walking in light, that's not there. So the light is the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So again, what? go back into what it is that may be darkness, whether it's the relationship, what did I say in the word about this? Okay? What did I say in the word about your children and things like that? So as I came in here, and I, um, I usually give the songs, um, to Pastor David, I call him Uncle David, and I only gave one song. <laughs> only one song was in my heart, and it was I Will Exalt You, because although I was overwhelmed, that song came in and was like, I'm going to exalt you above how I feel, and I just kept, that kept ringing and ringing and ringing, and I'm like, okay, but I, I want, I need someone else to sing with me, so I asked my son to, to play the violin, you know, but little... <laughs> Today, I'm, I was just overwhelmed and tears started flowing because as I was singing, there's another voice that just came out of nowhere and came and began to help sing. So although I did not feel like, see again, their, your feelings will have you going in, I'm telling you, circles to where you will not get past and get to what it is you're supposed to do on a daily basis. Because if I let my feelings have its way, I will not do what God asked me to do. And he says, when I tell you to sing, sing. And the word was given to me for me to be consistent consistent. So all that my feelings were saying, I don't have it in me to sing. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And I also need some help. That help came out of like nowhere. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You can, if the spirit of God falls on you for you to take over praise, do it, do it, do it, do it. So, um, it also makes me um, go into, um, when I started homeschooling my kids, I said I wanted to plant. Uh, and I went and bought dirt and all of that and planted tons of seeds. I think it was a lot of seeds. Maybe only a few sprouted. And as they sprouted, I had them in the den to where one side was in the darkness, the other side was toward the light and the plants didn't just sprout straight up. They were sprouting toward the sun, right toward the sun. So, and I'm, I want to 
pull it all together, you all. So it helps me to see that seed, that word that I've given you. At times, we're focusing on that stage. You know, the seed is a stage. However, the teachings we've learned. No, that seed is actually something, whether it's a tree, whether it's fruit, but we get stuck in the stage or I get stuck in a stage of what it is. Things aren't looking right. These are, these are the feelings that I'm having. But if you focus on the light and what that seed is supposed to be, you'll be focusing on what I have for you or what I've created for you. For example, okay, this, this confusion may be example in my marriage. And so then you begin to look at the person, which is wrong. And you'll start thinking, oh, he's not this. And that's not that. But how does God see that person? How does God see me right now? So focus on actually what I've already spoken in your life for whatever It is, you should be so. I am the light of the world. So no matter what situation, let's speak light into it. That's order. That's peace. (laughs) And that's what you have. So that's it. Well, thank you guys for just sharing your beautiful words because they really confirmed a lot of things, you know, for me. So I really appreciate you guys, you know, getting up and sharing what God shared with you because it was definitely for me. Um, my scripture is John three sixteen, So um, it speaks for itself. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. Anyone who believes in Jesus, Yahshua, will not die, but have eternal life. So this is my scripture, and I think it's pretty simple, but yet it's complex and complicated at the same time. And I think it's, um, you know, something that kind of just redirects your mind and your energy to know how much God loves each and every one of us. And I think that when you realize that, it's like, wow, you know, God. And I think I'm just going to speak for myself, is that you get so used to God just always being there and him always being like amazing and of course, like you're the one. And of course, like you love me. Like, I know that I know I'm loved by you. I'm forgiven by you. And I think a lot of times, like we forget how sacrificial love is. Um, someone asked, um, a question one, one time on, it was like this inspirational little thing. And they were like, um, describe love in one word. And I was like, it's sacrifice, it's sacrificial, because really when you grab that, when you love someone, like as a human, when we love someone or we fall in love with someone or you're in love with someone, um, it is sacrificial and it's sacrifice because I think probably all in this all of us in this room have had the experience, minus some of the children, um, have had the experience of falling in love with someone and being in love with someone and then having that person, and it's probably happened to many of us more than one time in our lives, that person pull away or pull out or do something extravagant or maybe it isn't even really something extravagant but maybe it's a little thing or whatever that it turns it off but yet you're still in love and so now that most beautiful feeling and thing that you had has now turned into the most awful feeling and thing and I think that when you go through that and you'll go through it more than once in your life. I know I have gone through it more than once in my life. And if we've done that to someone else, that person has gone through it in their life. And I think that when we realize that God sacrificed the most important thing for us to be able to dwell in eternity. And sometimes you're the sacrifice in this whole I don't want to call it a game because it's not, but in this whole love thing, sometimes you're the sacrifice and it's an honor to be that because when you love that deeply, that's a reflection of God. And I was having this conversation with my niece the other day in the car about, um, 
when someone you know someone is unfaithful someone you want to call it cheating whatever they go in there with someone else while you're in a relationship with them most people are like you know she was saying well like yeah I mean I can't put up with that like I couldn't do that because now I'm going to be angry with you now I'm going to treat you differently now I'm going to this now I'm going to that and she believes in Jesus so I can have this conversation with her and she's an adult and I said but we're supposed to be forgiving and we're supposed to love like like Yeshua like Jesus loved and she was like yeah I get that I understand that but she's like but I'm not Jesus and I was like I mean she's being honest I mean she's being honest she's like yeah I get that because she's very a very like strong willed like person she's like yeah I get that but she's like but I'm not Jesus but I'm not Jesus no but we're supposed to be like him and I said I said no but we're supposed to be like him and that's love is sacrifice when you meet someone who can forgive a spouse or um, a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever and still be with them but not only still be with them but still love them and be excited to be with them that right there is a reflection of this scripture right here and I just think about like man like God sacrificed and did all of this just so that we could have eternal life in this eternal glory and i think when we really realize that and remember it then we can be like all right like and it's not just about a, it, it it doesn't only happen in relationships in husband and wife marriages or boyfriend and girlfriend relationships but just in life in general a lot of times when you're walking around and you pray um and you ask god like to use you or you just pray like out and this is a this is a dangerous prayer and i know that it is and it's funny because i know it's a dangerous prayer and i still pray it and i'll be like god just fill me with the fruits of your spirit and i'll call them all out love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness all of that i'm praying for that but in doing so many times you will be sent to be the sacrifice and and, and and you will get others to come against you and people will like whatever you call it rub you the wrong way or whatever and I was having this conversation with someone at work the other day about it about how how are we supposed to love like God how are we supposed to love like Jesus when people aren't giving that it's it's about when people aren't sharing that same energy that you're pouring out into people when they're not pouring it out into you but you're still pouring it out into them that's you loving like Jesus and they're like oh yeah you know like you know it hurts <laughs> it's not easy and all the seasons you go through as a believer in life God will give you rest in it and you'll be cool okay fine and then here comes the mess again and then you'll have a little rest period and I was reading something the other day about how lions run and like they sprint and the person actually was talking about exercise and about how it's healthy for you to do like little sprints like you sprint and then you rest for a little while and then you sprint and then you rest and it's funny because I'll tell people they're like you know I run and I don't have like a um, consistent pattern and ask me how far I run I can't tell you I'm like oh I just do little sprints I'll just sprint and then I'll rest and I'll sprint and rest I just do it till it feels good and, and I'm good you know but that's how we are supposed to remember our lives as believers you're gonna have these ebbs and flows these ups and downs but ultimately it's making you like Jesus and it's teaching you how to love the world like God loves and in doing that you're going to give others each a glimpse of eternal life because that's what love is a glimpse of eternal life amen my scroll says in Jesus was life and that life was the light of people John 1 4. Whenever I come here and after each service, David knows this, I summarize everything he said here today. I go home, I sit down and think about it and ask God to give me an understanding of what I got out of the message. And so what I got out of this when I read my first lady, I said, what is David trying to do? And I looked at it, I said, oh, oh, oh. I said, when I looked at this, I said, I need to expound on this a little bit. So this is what I write. Like I said, John 1, 4 says, In Yeshua was life, 
and that life was the light of people. So what I began to do was to write what I wrote. I said, Yeshua came to bring the light of God's life into a spiritually dark and dying world. In Genesis 1, 3, the creation of light, light, was God's first creative move. Yeshua light implies revealing. Yeshua not only exposes our sinfulness, but Yeshua also illuminates a way to be saved from it. In Yeshua, the Son of God, who came to be the light of the world. Therefore, we as people, you and I, were given new life in the light of Yeshua's mercy, forgiveness, and love. What I do know is when we come to the light, which is Yeshua himself, we are set free from darkness and bondage. Remember in the biblical scriptures, Yeshua informed Nicodemus that the light has already come into the world. In John 8, 12, Yeshua spoke again to the people and he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but we'll have the light of life. I leave you, my brothers and sisters, with these conclusions. Number one, life is light and is never disconnected from Yeshua himself. Number two, in Yeshua, our Savior, is life, and the life is the light of all men. Only in Yeshua is there eternal life. Why? Because only through Yeshua can our darkness, our deadness be replaced with life and our blindness be replaced with light. I will say to you, please give your life to Yeshua while you have time. Believe in Yeshua. Receive Yeshua and Yeshua will be your life, your everlasting joy. Thank you. I have um, John 12, 46. Jesus said, I have come into the world as light. Whosoever believes in me will not be in darkness. So this, oh gosh, I'm not good at getting in front of everyone, but, um, I just want to give my testimony of what this actually meant um, and then also what Pastor David um, kind of confirmed last week. So um, God has, you all don't know, um, but oh yeah, yeah, how do I say it? Um, God had me to leave my home. He told me to leave and that he was going to be blessing you and I've had different people come and try to you know tear down the thing that God had spoken to me and each time God would come and give me his word um, and for me um, I started to get discouraged because I am a person that is a planner I know everything I had to let go of control and um, the one thing God told me to do was to give him the part of me that needs to know, but just to trust him. And so in all of this, um, last week, God spoke a word to me. And he said to me, when I give you the word, I give you that thing. And so for me, it was like bringing me out a place of that darkness, because I am in a, that place of not knowing. It's like when... God showed me, and he, it was a lot, it was a whole lot, but it was mainly about the fact that when he gives me that word, he wanted me to open up my capacity to believe. And so if I believe, then I already have it. But another thing he let me see this week is you're looking at the house, and you think the thing I'm talking about is the house, but it's the 
being able to open up your heart to believe that when God speak the word, he, you have it. Your, the, it's the word. He gives you a word. He can. He give you a word with his what's there. He gives it to you, and he gives it for us to be able to open our hearts. It's not just to know by our mind the knowledge, but it's actually being able to know the true revelation of it and being able to recognize even what Pastor David had been saying this week, I just keep confirming, I'm with you, I am with you, I am with you, I am with you. In this week, he let me know, it's not about the house. You have the thing, it's him. It's him. It's it's not it's not about the house he, he don't want me to get so focused about a house but just know that if god said it it's so it's already done it's a, his word is already performed whatever even if you your circumstances look a certain way it's already done everything seemed worse it's different from what God had said, but it's like, but it's already done. And he wanted me to recognize it's him. It's not a house. He wanted me to rest in him and taking away of that. I need to know, but to trust, because that's what he kept saying, trust me. And that's the hardest thing when you are a person that are just me growing up didn't have so I always made sure I have I'm the person people come to now I have to depend and this was another part we can say I depend on him but when you place in the position where you truly have to do you really are you the one trying to take control over when he's saying I'm the driver you stay here let me control and it's like I had to recognize no I'm still trying to do different things just to control the situation. But when he said to be in a place of receiving and relaxing and knowing that he got it, I had to surrender. Surrender my will. My will. My one, even the way I thought it was going to go, because truly, I did not think it was going to be like this. But not my will. And I truly want to be in the will of God. And I know my children and the people around me that don't understand and I know they're operating in spaces of fear and anxiety and worry and so I see it and I understand it but I had to hold on to God's word and even last week when he just kept saying the word and then hearing I feel like God just came to let me know I changed your name because I believed on what he said my name ain't beautiful and he came in to show me I changed your name to word that's what he came to let me know. And it was confirmation that God is saying, I am the word. I am that. And so it's knowing as long as I have God through all of this here, telling you I am living in abundance and I've learned so much. God has been purging and showing me so much about myself. Even just that feeling of entitlement feeling like you supposed to have just because God is well I do this Lord I no God is enough if he don't do anything because him dying on a cross for our sins was enough and so we come in with areas of where we're thinking that we're so good but God start to tear and that's what he's been doing tearing back purging up and showing and I'm just saying in this place here even reading this here the biggest thing was the believing and opening up my heart to truly believe, not just know the word. This is easy to read it and feel you get it. But truly in that heart, the heart, being able to receive it, know the revelation and walk in it. So I just wanted to give my testimony. I'm not a talk ground. I mean, I do it behind the scenes with my friends. But I thank you. I didn't know how it was going to be, but I do. I thank you. I thank you for allowing God last week to come and even just that confirmation even more in my heart. It's a whole lot about the word that he had given me. But that was the focus point. And when he came back to just to let me know, I just said, Lord, I thank you. Because I looked at the name Abram and how he changed Abraham and all it's just all the things where he's taking you on journeys and how he just changed my name 
to come to show me that. And I said, I thank you, Lord, because this is a new journey. My children have to see this, but they're learning the faith in God. The true walking and not just talking, but walking it. So I ask all of you all to please keep us up in prayer. But you all don't see me sad because I know that God is in all of this. And on the other side, you all will see just the very thing that God has promised me. Thank you.